Ray Knight here. Today I'm going to show you how to take an inexpensive remote timer shutter release and make it compatible with most Canon digital SLRs. I bought this cheap remote timer off of Amazon.com and I knew when I bought it that I was going to have problems with the uh, connector. Now this particular model stated that it was both compatible with a Canon 20D and 70 and it wasn't compatible at all. This uh, connector when stuck in the camera I could jiggle it and it would fire off a bunch of shots then it would lock the camera up. So in buying this I knew that this was going to be a problem. So what I did was uh, several years ago, more like five years, I'd bought a Canon remote switch and this is the RS uh, 80N and uh, I know that this particular remote works both with the 70 and the 20D and I went ahead and I cut the end off and I'm going to show you how to make this cheap timer compatible with all Canon cameras that take the RS 80N. There's a few tools you're going to need in order to do this operation. You're going to need a multimeter, wire strippers, soldering iron and solder, along with the male and female 1 8 TRS connectors. I'll have all this listed below in the crotch bar. The first thing I did was as I cut the cable to the RS-80N in half. That leaves me a nice length of cable for the connector end for the camera and it also leaves a nice length for the actual remote itself. I also cut the end off of the uh, remote timer, but I left this cable quite a bit longer, and I also uh, left a little bit of length on the connector end, so this way I can test and see which wire goes to which pin configuration. So make sure not to cut it off right here or you're going to have a problem trying to figure out which pin configuration you have. Before you start soldering the ends on, you're going to need to know what the pin configuration is for each one of these wires. And I find the easiest way to do this is just to take a thin piece of wire, stick it in the hole, and then what you're going to do is you're going to, you're going to want to take a multimeter like this and you're going to want to test to see which wire goes to which pin configuration and then you're going to want to make a note of that. Now what I found on the RS80 was I had three colored wires. I have a red, I have a white, and I have a ground. And I made a note uh, to which pin configuration each one of those goes to. On the uh, remote timer, I have a red, I have a white, here's the red, here's the white, and then I have a yellow. And you never want to assume that red is red, white is white, and that was true in this case. So I'm going to show you how to test to see which wire goes to which pin configuration. You're going to want to set your multimeter up so you can read a dead short, and the way to do that is you touch the two ends together and the multimeter should read zero. And that's how we're going to test this plug for uh, the pin configuration is I'm going to put one end to the wire that's in the pin hole and then I'm going to test each one of the three wires and whatever one reads zero is the one that goes to that uh, pin. So I'll test the yellow. And nope. I'm going to test the red. Nope. I'm going to test the white. And there's zero. So we know that that particular pin is um, to that white wire. And you're going to want to make a note of that because uh, each one of these wires is going to be soldered to one of these connectors. And we're going to have to do the same thing to these connectors. This connector here, I know that this long piece is the ground, but I'm not sure, and I know that this piece is the ground, but I'm not sure which, which end of these two are uh, to these particular pins right here. So we're going to do the same thing. First I want to test the ground just to make sure that that's what it is, or the shield. Oops. So we'll put that on there and we'll test this one and it should go to zero and it does. Okay. Now there's two other little pins on here 
and I'm going to test each one of those pins and figure out where it is on the plug. And the middle one, that's zero. So we know the middle one is to this plug, and that should mean that this pin should be the tip, if I can get it on here. And when I touch it, it should read zero. All right, so now I know the pin configuration of this plug, and I know the pin configuration of this plug, and also the plug to the RS80. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna solder up these ends to this cable, and we'll have to do the same thing for the uh, female end. We'll figure out which pin goes to which, and it doesn't make any difference how you solder these two wires as long as they correspond to each plug. So we know that ground will go to the long one and I know what ground is on this one as well and so we'll solder the grounds to these and then we just want to make sure that the pin configuration is the same throughout. And so I'll go ahead and show you how to solder these up. Before you start soldering, you're going to want to make sure to put the ends, the uh, plastic covers that screw onto the ends, onto your cable first because once you solder the ends on, you won't be able to get them on. I've done it, then you have to unsolder or cut everything back and start all over again. So make sure you put these on first before you solder your ends on. Next thing you're going to do, and we discussed this earlier, I've already, had, I've already gone ahead and stripped the ends back, but these are very tiny wires. You want to make sure to take your time and to strip them back properly uh, to the right length so it fits into the connector. You don't want really any extra cable uh, hanging around in there. Uh, you could get a dead short. It also adds uh, some resistance. So you want to take your time, strip these back, and get them the right length. The next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to tin the wires. They call it tinning the wires, and what you do is you lay the wire onto your soldering iron and touch a little bit of solder in there, and that will tin the wire, and that makes it uh, much easier to solder onto your, your connector. So go ahead and tin all of your wires. Now I just use, I've had this soldering gone probably for 30 years and I had it when I was in high school. It still seems to work fine. Uh, you just want to make sure that you keep your tip clean and you don't want to rest the uh, wires onto the iron very long or it'll start melting the uh, shielding back and you certainly don't want to have any of that shielding touch anything in there. So go ahead and just Give it a quick touch and it'll tin it. And there you can see the wire is nice and tinted. So as you're, uh, as you're working along, you'll want to make sure that you keep your soldering iron tip clean. And some people use uh, little wet uh, sponges. Some people use, um, I, I use usually just a rag and wipe it off if it gets too dirty. But the trick is, is to keep it clean so that way it can transfer heat to the, uh, to the wires without causing excess heat to build on the wires. So the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to solder the end onto the cable. Now I went ahead and took a minute to tin the inside of each one of these connectors and that just makes it quicker to uh, solder on. And the first wire I'm gonna try and solder on is the ground wire, which goes on the long end of this uh, connector. And let's see here if I can do this without uh, burning myself too badly. Now one thing about this is, is you're holding on to the actual connector. This will get very hot, so you wanna make sure and um, do it as quick as possible so you don't burn your fingers and I seem to be doing I do that all the time so you want to do this as quick as possible okay and there it is just
just like that, that piece has been soldered on. So I'm going to go ahead and solder the other two pins in here and uh, we'll close this up and we'll give it a test. Here you can see I have the male connector soldered onto the cable. You'll definitely want to take your time on this, make sure that you don't have a bunch of solder glopped in there or any stray wires. And once you're done soldering, you'll want to test it for any dead shorts before you cover it up. I checked for dead shorts and everything was fine, so I went ahead and put a piece of shrink tape on there, shrink tube, and this will help protect the uh, connectors inside from corrosion, from moisture. It'll also help hold the cable to the connector end uh, in case it gets yanked on. And now, what you want to do is just put the end on and screw it down. And that piece is done. And that's the cable end that goes into the camera. And the next thing I'll do is uh, solder the ends on to the actual remotes. And here you can see we got the female end soldered on. This is a little bit more challenging. The, uh, there's not nearly as much room to uh, get in there and do it. Take your time and uh, should work out okay. And uh, before you close it up, make sure you test it for any dead shorts. And uh, we're about ready to test to see if this works. Now that I have the connector soldered up and put together, let's go ahead and give this a try. This is a Canon 7D body. I have the remote timer set up for five images every two seconds. Now let's try this remote timer as just a manual shutter release. and it works beautifully. I now have the remote timer hooked up to the Canon 20D body. Uh, same setup as before, five images every two seconds. Let's go ahead and give this a try. And as you can see, works beautifully. Let's go ahead and uh, try out the manual shutter release with the remote timer. And as you can see, works perfectly. There's a couple problems with these inexpensive remote timers. The ends that come with them aren't very reliable, so in cutting them off and adding this type of connector, you've now made this inexpensive remote timer compatible with any Canon body that takes the RS 80 n the other problem with this remote timer, and it's true with all remote shutter releases, is the actual length of the cable. Now that I have this end on there, I can go out and buy whatever length cable I want that has an eighth inch stereo plug-in, and now I can get as far away from the camera as I want. As you can see, with just a couple simple tools and a little bit of your time, you can take an inexpensive remote timer, like this one, and make it compatible with almost any Canon digital body that takes the RS 80 n I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thanks for watching.